Welcome back to Franchise Hockey Manager 10 with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Welcome back. If you're last with us, you would have seen that since we got Boldy, we have maintained our spot at the top of the Eastern Conference with 130 points. Total in the NHL, though, pretty sure we're still up there by a decent margin. Uh, yeah, we LA Kings were second. They had 55 wins. 62 wins is pretty massive for us, though. 14 losses and 6 in overtime. Uh, we do currently have a four-game win streak, and our shootouts was 3-3. Three and three. But more importantly, let's take a quick look at how well our players end up doing. You had Stamkos that had 110. Jesus. 56 goals, 54 assists for 110 points in 82 games. You had Gensel with 97 and 82. And then you had Crosby with 81 and 82. So even at 37, he's still doing Crosby things. We just need Stamkos to sign with us but i don't think he's going to sign with us this year he he doesn't want to he wants to test free agency we're going to see if we can offer him a contract real quick and it's not showing it hold on let's go back for a new contract there we go yeah he just wants to test the market so unfortunately we won't be able to get him until free agency we might have to try going all in again for that um, then you have uh, Rust showing up with 78 points, so good thing we didn't get rid of Rust because Rust has definitely uh, stepped it up this season as well. Boldy, since we've had him, has a point per game, and Carlson's at around 78 uh, points in 82 games. McTavish also was 70 in 82, so he's progressing very well as well. Malkin was 64. He was on a suspension. I don't know if he still is. I guess that gets waived for the playoffs. But uh, 64 points in 79 games, and then you have Latang with 41 in 76, and Newhook showing up with 53 as well. Korchinski, still five-star potential, 39 in 81. He's currently a quarterback, though. Should probably be in... I wouldn't mind training him as an old-school defenseman, but good enough as is. Uh, Spence also, only a three-star, though. Did we... I think we traded for Spence. So we ended up trading for Spence early on, but uh, he hasn't progressed in terms of the player that we thought that he was going to be. And even uh, we got Brandstrom as well, and 13 points in 26 games is pretty decent. His grade also kind of reflects that as well. He's around 65. And then we'll take a look at how well our goalies have done. The tandem duo, Thompson also doesn't want to sign with us uh, next season, so he's going to test free agency. So we've, we've tried offering him out, but he hasn't done anything. They have virtually identical numbers, though. Uh, 33 games, 23 wins for Thompson, 5 losses, and 3 overtime losses. And he has around 9-10 save percentage. Goals against is around 2.89. So um, Yari just a little bit better, 9-13 and 2.7 with 39 wins, 9 losses, and 3 overtime losses as well. Overall, pretty good. Can't really um, can't really be upset with that. Um player or the teams that we're probably going to end up playing is I, I think we're going to end up playing Carolina so we end up playing Carolina first round they had they finished with 90 points so hopefully it's not the same kind of thing that we end up having last year I really hope not uh, let's let's just jump into the matchup and see if we can uh, at least get past the first round this season because I feel so Crosby will retire if we can't get at least out of the first round and here are the nominations this year. We don't have the heart there, so it looks like it's going to be McDavid or Dreisaitl or Eichel. Um, we're not going to get the Vesna either. I think the tandem kind of ruined that one. Um, but we are getting nominated for uh, Norris Trophy with Latang, but he's second billing on that, so I kind of doubt that he gets it. Uh, we are currently being um, one of the finalists for... The executive of the year award so that's pretty good for us and then carlson lady bing and Sidney crosby could get the mark messier as well but i think that's just a publicity one and then we could get the jack adams as well i currently having to face against lightning and los angeles los angeles is probably the favorite um, lightning did get 107 points and looks like Toffoli's not going to end up playing this season or not going to be signed by preds I didn't even know these on the Preds, but we're going to face off against uh, Carolina, and hopefully we can get the win here. 
Uh, we'll take a look at what's going on in the rest of the league and see if uh, if this is going to be good for us or not. Um, LA and Anaheim. LA is definitely going to win that one. Uh, Vancouver against Vegas. Vegas probably has that one as well. Edmonton's probably going to beat Winnipeg. And I'm going to go with... I always have to go with Nashville. Nashville's going to beat Minnesota. Uh, we're going to beat uh, Carolina. New Jersey's going to probably beat Columbus. Uh, Islanders, I think, beat uh, Tampa. And then Buffalo's, Buffalo's going to steamroll Boston. That's just my, my guesstimation, but could always be wrong. Who knows? But uh, we'll set up our lineups here because I think... Oh, no, Malkin still can't play. Malkin can't play for three more games, so stupid suspension ends up ruining everything for us. But um, the lines that we're going to have is Yari's going to obviously start for us. Kopanen, uh, Brown, and Wheeler for now. Tatar, Newhook, and Nieto. Uh, McTavish, Crosby, and Rust. And then we have Gensel, Stamkos, and Boldy there. And then Brandstrom and Spence, Smith and Latang, and then Korchinski and uh, Carlson. I'm just hoping that we can get the wins early because we don't want to uh, get screwed over by not having Malkin for the last couple games. But uh, so far this season, Carolina won the first matchup and second, and we won the third, and they won the fourth. So they currently have done a little bit better than us uh, this this season. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can manage to at least get the win there. Let's see if we can get it at home first. We do win 6-3, so... Showing them exactly how it's done. Crosby, Rust, McTavish, Nieto, and Crosby again with Spence thrown in the middle there. And Winnipeg leads, Tampa leads, and LA leads. So, I mean, I was wrong about the uh, thing. Minnesota's winning, New Jersey's winning as well. So that's just the first matchup. We'll do uh next one here. 7-4. So we won both at home. McTavish getting his second, Gensel getting his first, Smith, Rust, Kopanen all producing as well, and then Wheeler and Nieto. Nieto doesn't didn't want to sign with us either, so we're going to probably look at it towards the, uh, the rest of the season anyways. At the end of the season, we're probably going to try and offer him something. I think we have around $9 million available, but obviously it all depends on Crosby. If Crosby stays with us, then obviously we'll... We'll do something a little bit different, but if he doesn't, then obviously we wouldn't offer Nieto that money anyways. But he is a pretty solid uh, defensive player. We lose 4-1 away. Caught Kinyemi scoring for them. Livingston is the only one who ended up scoring for us. So not a good good start. Winnipeg winning 3-0. Minnesota leading 2-1. Hopefully this is just the one game that they end up winning. And we do have Malkin back, so... That is good for us. We managed to win 5-2, so we're currently up 3-1. McTavish, Stamkos, McTavish, Brown, and Tatar there, all with goals. And then we conceded at the very, very end there in the third period. So we did win 5-2. Winnipeg leads, and Tampa leads, and LA swept them. Yeah, we know his suspension's over. Thank you. That was a bit too late. I feel as though those updates should kind of come straight. Like, it should be kind of like a notification. Especially when when someone's injured. As soon as they're injured, it should be popping up right away. Because uh, it's just something that you want to make the adjustments immediately. And a lot of time when they're injured and stuff like that, you're, you're doing it last second. So even if you're bringing someone up to replace them um, from the AHL, you can't really do so. I feel as though everyone's going to be regressing. I really hope they're not. McTavish looks like he's improving just a little bit. Spence as well. And then Brown, speed is going down. So this will probably be his last year with us. He is only a two-star. Crosby currently down to a four-star now. Acceleration a little bit gone. Same thing with Malkin and Latang. So all the old older guys losing acceleration. I don't know why they're all losing the exact same stat. That seems kind of... Uh, suspect to me but let's see if we can win this last one at home you know what let's put in let's put in thompson though feels though keep the freshness and i feel as though this is something that uh, any team would probably do anyways i normally go for the kill but i feel as though we should probably be modest with this approach and we win seven nothing so it seems like it was a good call for us uh we got tatar boldy mctavish carlson mctavish again 
and then Malkin and Boldy. So Malkin already producing after a second game there with us. It's going to go to Hall of Fame. Let's see, uh, let's see who, who we face off in the next round after this as well. And then we'll just jump straight to it. I think we have to sign some uh, some guys as well. So I hopefully uh, won't show that. And we'll just jump straight through to that. I do like Tepo Numinen. McGilney, I feel so now I can actually vote for him. I don't oh know. Keith Kachuk always. I don't know why I would. Dan Foose would, would have been the, the number one that I would have done every single time. So it looks like Minnesota's leading and Winnipeg's leading there. It'll be interesting to see who we face. Tied all around, but Minnesota ends up winning against Nashville. Um, Winnipeg wins, Tampa wins, Buffalo wins. So I was right about those, and Vegas wins as well. I think I just went with my heart. So we're facing Columbus, so let's just jump into that. And here for the second round, you have LA versus Vegas. I feel as though LA is going to win that one. Probably in game six, I'm going to guess. Vegas in Minnesota, I'm going to guess that Minnesota ends up winning this one. Let's go game seven for that one. Um, I feel as though we're going to win in game six, and then we're probably going to end up facing Buffalo. Kind of doubt that there's going to be a reunion with uh, Stamkos back home, but it would be pretty decent. So we do have uh, Yari starting for us. We faced off against them a couple times. Uh, we won the first one, second one. They won the third one. We won the fourth one and the fifth one as well. So this should be this should be pretty straightforward. We lose first game. That is not what we want to see at all. So we end up getting shut out game one, and uh, this does this looks this feels like a a Florida situation all over again. So let's see if we can get it at home here. Win five three. So it's series is tied. Crosby getting it, uh, Smith, Stamkos, and McTavish, and then Nieto. So it's currently tied 1-1. We go back to Columbus. Columbus started off the season pretty terrible, so it's shocking that they actually even managed to make the playoffs. So we'll do AI setup organization again, and let's see if we can get the win away. We end up losing 6-5. Not a good start for us. 2-1. And both Tampa and Minnesota is actually in the lead there as well. See if we can get it. Tie it up. 5-2. Got uh, Livingston, McTavish, uh, Gensel, Crosby, and Nieto all producing there as well. It looks like this is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Tampa Bay is winning 3-1. So, I mean, if the script is in, it's definitely us facing it off against Tampa Bay. And let's see if we can get the win here. We get it 6-1, so we're currently up in the series. Latang getting his first of the playoffs, knowing exactly when to show up. You have uh, Rust and Livingston and Newhook producing there as well, and then Brown and Bransom. So a lot of the guys that you wouldn't expect to produce are producing. That is definitely in the Pittsburgh way. I remember Christensen um, ended up doing that for for one or two seasons. He was like a playoff hero when they end up having their uh, cup run there. All right, let's set it up again, and let's just hope for the win here. We're going to play in Columbus here, and we end up whoa, we end up winning 10 nothing to end the series there. Stamkos, Boldy, and then Stamkos again. Stamkos got a hat trick, and then you got Malkin, Bransom, Carlson, and Smith, and then Stamko Stamkos had five. Stamkos had five goals. He really wants to face off against uh, Tampa Bay. Let's see. Yeah, Tampa Bay looks like they're primed to push through. Tied. Series tied. I I really hope that we end up facing Tampa Bay now. Buffalo ends up winning it, so we don't get a reunion. Tampa Bay dropped the ball there for sure. And let's see who else is going to face us in the next round. Now for the conference finals, we have Minnesota against Vegas. So, wow, Golden Knights steamrolled through LA. I thought LA was going to be our biggest opposition, but it looks like I was wrong. And then even Minnesota wins 4-1. We only end up winning 4-2 there, and then Buffalo went to game seven. So hopefully Buffalo is just a little bit more tired than we are, and I'm really hoping for a win at home. So we have 
7-3 we lost. Buffalo won 4-3 against us. We then won the next two. So hopefully that was with Boldy. No, it wasn't with Boldy. I was going to say, hopefully it was with Boldy and it's a new team. But it looks like it was our old team. So we're looking to get the win 4-2. Surprised Levi, Levi's not in net for them. Um, we did have him with our Montreal Canadiens uh, series there. Uh, Stamkos, Crosby, and then Brandstrom and Crosby again. So Crosby producing in the playoffs like he always does. Vegas, uh, looks like we're going to end up facing Vegas in the finals. I don't think Minnesota has what it takes. And let's AI set up organization again. We can get the 2-0 two, two series lead. We do 5-2. Stamkos getting his 10th. McTavish actually having 10. I didn't even notice that he had so much. But then, surprisingly, getting his 11th. Uh, Rust and Carlson showing up there. So McTavish is a monster, that's for sure. Not necessarily producing in the regular season, but then postseason just dominant. So let's see if we can win this one at home, or at way, sorry, in Buffalo. 6-4, so I think we're going to put Thompson in for the last game. Uh, Newhook, Stamkos, Stamkos, and then Crosby, then with Tatar and Carlson. Even Tatar signing has been pretty decent for us. So we're winning 3-0. Minnesota's winning 3-0, or 2-1, sorry. And, I mean, if Voldy ends up facing off against his old team, that would be pretty interesting, that's for sure. So we'll switch up the lines. I don't care about the, the sweep. I care about the longevity of this. See if we can win away. We lose, so sure enough, yeah, he ends up losing for us. But Crosby getting the lone goal for us. Or no, Boldy as well. Sorry, it was. I thought it was 3-1 uh, for a second, but that's what the series is. And then it's tied, so Vegas is really pushing in there. They want to face us. I know they do. But Boldy wants his return. I said that before. And now Yari has a chance to win at home here for us. He wins at 6-4, and we are off to the next round. Currently, Vegas has the lead 3-2 here. Let's see who we end up facing. Um, now we have the ballot again. So obviously Vince and Dan Foose. Probably bring Demore there as well, even though they are in our division. I feel so Chara. Chara has to be in that conversation. And I mean, who? I feel Van Beesbrook. I do like Van Beesbrook quite a bit. Uh, the other ones I like a little bit more, obviously. And let's see. Jersey sales. Carlson's at the top. Stamkos, Crosby, and Yari there as well. Malkin fitting in up top there for all the Russian people as well. So series is tied. My god, that is wild. Another dad joke there. Pretty wild. Let's see. And Vegas is the team that we're going to end up facing in the finals here. We got our contract extended. At least we end up delivering in the promise that we're going to end up uh, making it to the finals there. So we fi finally did it in year two. Now that, let's see if we can win one more cup for Crosby there. We're going to do the update again. We did have a decent amount of uh, time off there. But uh, hopefully our players are just more well rested than they are. Uh, throughout the regular season, we did face them twice. We won 3-2 and 2-1. So hopefully that's more the same here. Yari against Hill. 9-2 is the first game. Jesus, that is insane. Stamkos getting his 14th. Nieto getting his 5th there. Carlson, I like Carlson too. If I can sign him next year, I definitely would. He is 5.9, so 5.6 million, and he would come to us too. Interesting. Going to have to remember that one. Uh, we do have Smith, McTavish, Carlson, Rust, Newhook, Gensel. So everyone just scoring. McTavish getting two, I think. Yeah, he gets two there. Crosby had five assists though. Unreal. So we're up the series 1-0. Really hope we can do this. Yeah, 9-2, Jesus. Do uh, set up organization again. I will want to put our backup in at some point. And we win 4 nothing. So just same dominance. Gensel getting his 6. Samkos with 15. Korczynski with his 1st. And Wheeler gets his 2nd. So, so far, even the Wheeler pickup, the Tatar pickup, all kind of showing up when we need it. So not too bad. And then Thompson's probably going to play... Let's uh, 
No, we'll play it the next game if we win this one. And we lose 3 nothing. So Lindblom shutting us out. Looks like they switched up their goalie as well. You know what? Let's go let's go with the bold bold thing. We'll uh we'll start Thompson for the last last game in uh, Vegas there. Feels though he might perform a little bit better in Vegas. Just to swap it up. But uh let's do that. I know Yari's on fire, but uh it's just kind of a gut feeling that we have here. And the gut was right. 4-2 win there. Thompson showing exactly what he needs to do in Vegas there. We end up betting it all on black, that's for sure. We got uh, New Hook with five goals there. We got Boldy with six. We have uh, McTavish with 14. That is insane. I, I'm going to be very in awe of their stats at the end of the series for sure. Oshi hanging it up as well, so congratulations to Oshi. At 38, he is now officially retiring. I don't even know if he played this season. But it looks like Yari's going to get the last one at home. See if we can win in five games here. And we do 5-1. You are now looking at the champions of the NHL in year two. So far as success, Crosby, Crosby just absolute dominant. Uh, you have Malkin there, Boldy, Brandstrom. So Crosby didn't score in the last game. That is the only upsetting part, but he did assist. He did get at least one assist, so that is pretty good for us. We win it in game five, and geez, number six for Pittsburgh. We lost one in 2017, so not even too too far away from right now. I mean around seven years um, in the making, uh, but we managed to do at least for Crosby's one of his last year. I, I'm very interesting to see if he's uh, going to retire after this year, but we won against Carolina in pretty dominant fashion. We only lost the one there. Then uh, we end up playing the quarters. Went a little bit longer than expected, but uh, we we lost the first game. We got shut out, and then we managed to at least even it out, and then we just went on a tear the last two games there. And then semifinals for Sabres. I mean, we're really hoping that we're going to face Tampa Bay, but uh, we end up winning 4-2, 5-2, 6-4. -2, we lost 3-2 with Thompson and Nett. And then uh, we end up winning 6-4. Uh, then for Vegas, we end up winning the first two. We lost 3-0 at the first time that we played in Vegas. And then we bet it all on Thompson to win there. And then we we brought it back at home and won 5-1. So extremely happy there. Let's take a look at how well our players end up doing. Because that's the important part. So we'll do the summary here postseason, obviously. And uh, Stamkos 20, only had 27 points, though. That is kind of shocking, but still very dominant. 27 in 21 games. Crosby with 25 and 21. Carlson with 25 and 21. He doesn't probably have too much postseason experience, does he? Preseason, Jesus. Surprisingly not. He doesn't have that many. He did have Sharks in Ottawa the one year. But Stanley Cup playoffs, he's only played 93 games, but he has 81 points. So he does know he does know to show up though in the postseason. He even scored three for us last last year there. McTavish has been the most pleasant surprise ever though. 24 points in 21 games. I think he was the difference maker. That's for sure. And even Gensel, 24 in 21. I wonder what his playoff stats are because I remember him being pretty decent. So, yeah, the first two years are pretty much what stand out. But then he had pretty much the same as those, though. Just more goals uh, for that. I remember I grabbed him in fantasy a long, long time ago when I was in a playoff pool. And he ended up doing very well for me. 82 points in 84 games. That is very good for him in the postseason. Boldy also knowing when to show up. 21 in 21 games. Russ with 20. And then uh, Smith also... Pretty dominant, 18 in uh, 21 there. Latang was 17, and then Nieto even was 16 as well. Livingston has been a surprise. We end up just getting rid of him. We end, yeah, we got rid of Raquel just for a cap dump, and then Livingston showing up pretty decently for us. Uh, throughout the regular season, though, he did play 11 games, so he did show up a little bit more in the playoffs. I think that was maybe due to injury, and then even Brandstrom 
also with the 13 and 26 is pretty good. Kurczynski still still developing. It's going to be very good for us, at least in terms of the rebuild. It's not going to feel as though it's it's harder for that. But uh, we have 14 wins, four losses for Yari, not losing an OT at all. Neither neither one of them losing an OT. Thompson had a 948 save percentage, so maybe we should have banked a little bit more on him throughout the postseason because that is unreal. I don't think I've ever seen something that high in the postseason. Uh, did have a 1.67 goals against, so even his loss wasn't really his fault there. And then uh, Yari with a 2.56, which is a rather rather high, but postseason is always a little bit different anyways. Um, but so far, so good. So we'll look at the the cap obligations here. We do have annually, we do have around 10 million next year, but I feel as though that might be uh, messed up with with that. But uh, currently, yeah, Stamkos is going to be off the books next year. Nieto, we're going to try and sign, but he does want he wants 4.42. So it's all going to be dependent on Crosby. If Crosby retires, then we don't do it. If Malkin retires as well, we kind of don't do it. But we do have Crosby for at least two more seasons, but nothing's guaranteed. Half the time that I extend people to three years, they don't end up uh, signing with us for that long. But uh, his cap is going to be a little bit less. So he's going to be around $6 million there. So not too bad that I got him for two more years. So this uh, this rebuild might go on a, or it might be delayed just a couple of years as well because Carlson also ends at that time. Malkin will try and extend at least for one more season after this, and uh, that'll be the focus of next episode for sure. Borgen's obviously going to be off the books as well, but he was in the AHL as well. But um, and then Thompson, we're going to have to find another backup, but it's probably going to be um, it's probably going to be Blanquist there who had. 21 wins there in the AHL. I wonder how well they actually did. Our AHL team had... Oh, we clicked on the wrong thing. Our AHL team had 38 wins, 28 losses, and 6 overtime losses. And Hood is not ours at all, so none of our players actually showing up there. So it'll be pretty interesting to see... Uh, what we end up doing next season. But uh, it's been a great season so far, or great series so far, and uh, thank you everyone for watching, and until next time.